Hey gang, back with another video for you today. I got a special guest here with me. Not so special. <laughs> it's my third here. Third time here? Fourth time? Third time? Fourth. fourth. Third. This is fourth. This first time here. Yeah. Hi folks, this is Daniel with the Nose Nose and I'm very, very happy to be back today, particularly because this is my favorite kind of content. I'm really? a nerd. I'm such a nerd. She's a nerd about Tonka. Yes. Today we're going to talk about Tonka beans mm -hmm. and everything about Tonka beans. So if you're curious about Tonka beans and you love the way they smell and perfumes, then you might want to stick around mm -hmm. to watch this video. And drink wine with us. Cheers. Or something. I'm trying to get him drunk and he doesn't get drunk. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. This is Dana. If this is your first time landing on my channel and you love watching fragrance reviews, finding out about new fragrances, discovering new brands, learning about notes like Tonka beans, and you love watching fragrance reviews and still haven't subscribed to the channel, please click that subscribe button below and also click the bell so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. Mm -hmm. So why do we love Tonka beans? Why wouldn't we <laughs> love Tonka beans? Um, I think Tonkas have been overlooked for so long, although they've been present in so many perfumes for so long that I, I it's, it's just unfair. I, I was actually thinking that huh. Tonka beans are like what our bergamot is for the top. I would say They're that. They're used so I would say much. That. I would say that. And it's been a long time they've been used. They've been discovered um, for perfumery purposes um, in the 1800s, so that's a long time. Long time They've been yeah. accidentally discovered or isolated in 1820, I believe. But then they were used in 1882, was it? Fougère Royale by Vigan. There you have it. And because of Fougère Royale, they became a staple mm. through what they contain in everything that we now know as Fougère. So Tonka has been present in some application or another since the beginning of Tom. modern perfumery, if the, I mean, the way we know it. Yeah. So. so the origins of Tonka beans then, where do they come from? Hmm. Tonka beans are a Caribbean product. Um, Caribbean. Although I think Brazil and South America, South America is now producing quantity-wise more. But the name Tonka means bean in some of the Caribbean languages. And I think Kumarin, which is the main ingredient in Tonka, comes from the Topi language, which is in uh, French Guayana. Um, wow. It's a, you it's know a tree. This. I know this. I love Tonka. <laughs> I'm such a nerd. I am such a nerd. This is what I'm talking about. Dana's a nerd. I'm I am a nerd. nerd. I am the nerd here. The nerd knows knows. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's what I was saying. This is my favorite kind of content because I often talk about facts um, of perfumery that people actually don't really focus on. I think it's important that we know where things are coming from. I think it's important for research when it comes to comp comparing stuff. And I think it's important to know because nowadays Tonka is very fancy, um, like oud, even though oud has been used for centuries in yeah. the Middle East, right? But oud is now um, fancy and very trendy in the West. Although it's been used in different applications throughout the years, um, even in modern perfumery for, you know, 200, 100, 120 years. Yeah. So, um, can we show them Tonka beans? We can show them. Can I talk about what application is? Because I think a few yeah, yeah. of your viewers were asking sure. about that word. Talk I've about used application. It before. Yes. I've used that before uh, when we were doing the review for Exaltatum. Exaltatum. So I've can got I have a, one? Sure. There you go. Can I, I eat? You can eat, you're gonna... Can I say this on camera? You can say it on camera. <laughs> you're gonna shit your brains out if you eat the whole thing. Okay, let's put it right here. But, um... Yeah, this is... This is what it looks like. There you go. They're kind of like wrinkly, very woody. Raisins. But smooth and woody and dry beans. Um, very similar to... Um, they remind me of bitter almonds. In smell? Yeah. Okay. So they grow on a tree, first of all. They are not in the same family as beans and peas and all the other um, legumes. Oh, they are basically big seeds, kind of like almonds. Um, they develop from these beautiful purple flowers. Um, oh. Yep. Purple flowers. And the flowers smell slightly vanillic and slightly... 
well, flowery in a way that you can't really place anywhere. You know, rose is a flower, but it smells like rose. They're very specific families of flowers. This... Yeah, it does look like an almond in there. It does. It tastes like a bitter almond. If anybody's, you know, found one of that bitter almonds in a, mm -hmm. in a, in a batch of sweet almonds, Ooh. you know the... F wow. Right? So there's the shock You know shock what it smells of like to me? I mean, it tastes like? Huh. I used to have a habit of breaking into the apricot seeds. Seeds, there you go. That's what it tastes there like. There you go. Very bitter. So it's bitter, but it's velvety at the same time. It's a little bit flowery. It's, it's vanillic. Bit. Vanillic, Vanilla. absolutely. I can taste the vanilla. So it's been used hmm, to supplement and to enhance the uh, intent of vanilla. So let's go back to the application. Somebody was asking, what do you mean by application? Does that mean what something is in combination with? Um, and I said, actually, no. When I talk about um, application of something, I mm -hmm. mean about the intention of the perfumer. It's not necessarily what it combines this ingredient with, but what do they want to do with it? Is it a main ingredient? Is it a main actor in a film? Or is it a base supporting role that is very important, but not the thing that you notice first? Okay. Is it textural? Is it supposed to uh, uh, provide something that's not necessarily um, a smell? Sometimes, you know, ginger, we were talking about earlier, yeah. gives it gives perfumes a crunch, for example. Iris gives it's it a velvety thing, yeah. and so on velvety and so forth. Velvety smooth. Right. So, um, is it... To me, is Tonka it, is nutty. There you go. Um, is it supposed to be um, a natural smell or is it supposed to be a made up smell? Is it, so it's, uh, it has everything to do with intent. Mm -hmm. in, in Musk's case, for example, there's a difference between soapy musk and animalic musk. There's a difference between clean musk and dirty, um, musk. And dirty musk and so on <laughs> and so forth. So that's what I talk about when I say application. That's what I refer to okay. the intention Makes behind sense the composition, the creative uh, direction of something. So with Tonka, applications can range from Tonka is just used for fixation. You don't really smell it, but it's used there because it makes everything else last longer. Um, or it can be part of the fougere family because you can't have a fougere without the kumarin, which is the main ingredient in Tonka, right? Fougere is made of Kumar, lavender, yeah. oak moss, and kumarin. You can't have a fougere without these Those three. three yeah. Or is it the main ingredient in a very delicious gourmand? And because gourmands have been like exploiting vanilla for so long, now perfumers are looking to alternative um, uh, yeah, sources. Yeah, vanilla has been for, overdone. Right. <laughs> so now they're looking at, at Tonka because it's like the dirty rebel vanilla. This is the this is the rock dried up dirty rebel. <laughs> this is this is the rock you know, punk rock version of vanilla. <laughs> of vanilla. Wow. You know, that's good. You're so vanilla. No, you're not. You're so Tonka. You're a bean. Oh, it's a bean. <laughs> okay. Uh, fev. Yeah, we've, we've fev, right? Fev. Fev is bean in French. Mm -hmm. Delicious. So, fev delicieuse. Delicious bean. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Tonka actually means bean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. The, the word tonka okay. means So, what bean. language is that? It's one of the Caribbean languages. It's tonka. it's It's a variation of Topia. Yeah. Okay. So, French Guyana. That's where it's coming from. Wow. It's a tree, seeds. Um, like I said, it comes from a, from a, from a, um, purple flower. It's a beautiful tree. Um, so it's a tropical tree. And actually, kumaru, which is also a word from the Topi language, means tree. So, kumaru, which is the base for kumarin, which kumarin. is what tonka bean so contains. So kumarin is extracted from the tonka mm -hmm. bean. Yes. Now, if you wait for long enough and these get dry enough, the kumarin is going to show on the surface of this like crystals. Oh, really? Yeah. It's just one of the easiest things to extract. Interesting. Save of, um, you know, some of the ingredients you just press and you get an essential oil out of them. It's very easy. Um, this is easy as well because Kumarin just comes out in crystals and they don't dilute in water, but they're very, very soluble in alcohol. So it's very easy. You just drop this in rum, you leave it there, it kind of pops up. Wow. And then you take it out. So you've done this before. <laughs> I love doing I told you I'm a nerd. I told you I'm a nerd. I, I experiment with everything. You you take it out, you let it dry, and as it dries, all of those crystals come out, and then you can put them in alcohol and make okay. perfume with right. them. So that's, so let, that's let, basically how it works. Let me ask you, where did you get this bag of Tonka beans? I ordered it on Amazon. That's what I thought. I thought <laughs> I'd seen it there. Yeah. How much does it cost? 
it's some like twenty dollars or something. Twenty something, thirty. Yeah, they don't sell it anymore. I think easily. I saw it there. Really? Yeah, I think okay. I saw it there. So uh, Tonka has been used for ages because it's very vanilla, it's very nutty, it's very woody. It's it's a it's a beautiful flavor. Um, but what about the bitter? Well, the bitter goes away. So Kumaran, if you eat it like this, it's bitter. Uh -huh. If you take the crystals out and you dilute them in alcohol, it becomes vanillic. Oh, okay. So it's a combination of two. It's only bitter because it's too much for your brain to process. Mm. It's very simple. Okay. Uh, we have receptors that deal with this type of molecule, which is a very simple molecule. It's in the same family as all the benzenes and all the uh, colonic things like... Um, um, uh, colonic things? Kalon. I don't know oh. the word in English. Kalon. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, Kalon. So, so, right, okay. so watermelon, melon, melon. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking family. about a colonic where you go get a colonic. Like, no, that's not what I'm talking about. No, that's not what it smells like. No, I'm talking about mel melon okay. flavors. You're talking about Kalon, the note. Kalon. Yeah, the synthetic that's right. note. Okay. So they're in this, well, it's a synthetic note now, but it comes from. From the a, watermelon. Right. Yeah, melons. Melons. Yeah. Uh, honeydews and all of that stuff. So um, they share chemical um, features. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple molecule. Our brain knows it and has been knowing it for a long time, so it's easy to recognize. So a lot of times it kind of like pushes it down and sometimes becomes anosmic to it. Yeah. But um, in perfumery, it's been um, known to fixate things. Um, and also to provide this idea of sweetness without any added notion. So sometimes, you know, cherry blossom has kumarin. Uh, lavender mm -hmm. has kumarin. Clover has kumarin. Interesting. They usually combine cherry cherry with tonka beans they go. in perfumes. Because they, they lift they, each other they up. They complement each other. Interesting. And, and lavender and fougere. Because they lift each other up, they make sense together. Hmm. It's kind of like a fashion Just, show where every single outfit is, is, you know, can stand in and of itself. But then together they make a collection. If there's one thing that carries through, right? It's one color, one so, style, one. So Paul Parquet Same figured thing. this out with Fougere Royale. So he go. figured out that when lavender. you do the lavender, oak moss, and tonka bean coumarin. They, they work complement very well each other. Yeah. And it's been 120 years and we're still doing and it. We so. have like so many fougeres in, in the world. So because many. it works. I mean, it Tom just... Ford has like the fourth fougere that's coming out in less than a year. Can you believe that? I will not comment on that. Thank <laughs> you very much. But it makes sense. You know, if, if you carry one thing throughout a collection of seemingly unrelated issues, notes, outfits, whatever it is, um, albums, Right, a concept that goes through several songs. Mm -hmm. It kind of it kind of makes everything um, lift other elements of the same series up. Yeah. You kind of you have to work together in order to make sense as a collection. So, Kumarin does that, and that is the main ingredient in Tonka. Sometimes, like I said, pure crystals comes out, come out, and some perfumers, if you really get them drunk, <laughs> they're going <laughs> to admit that. Oh, will, they, will they get drunk though? I don't know what perfumers do. You're the big shots. I, I'm a mere mortal. I don't know anybody. Uh, but if you... You'll really, find out soon. Oh. <laughs> if you corner them, they will... Some of them admit that up to 90% of all fragrances out there contain some form of tonka. Kind of like vetiver. Yeah, the, I was it's, thinking of the bergamot. It's kind of like... It's, it's in and there. And bergamot. Yeah. It's in there. So, let me ask you this. Um, sure. We spoke about price. Mm -hmm. um, and this bag is about fifteen dollars. Is it an ex expensive ing ingredient no. then, as far as perfume? No, it's not. No, a, it's, it's a not cheap an expensive. It's a ch relatively sort of cheap ingredient. It's not ingredient. like iris. No, um, it's a relatively cheap ingredient because it's plentiful, because the extraction is very easy, mm -hmm. and because it keeps well. Okay. So you know you don't have to worry about you know like with the violet, you have to worry about it degrading. It just kind of falls apart. You have to use it, and you have to use it in a certain combination that keep it stable. Otherwise, you're just going to lose it if you're thinking about um, using natural violet. Um, can I? Or else you have to wear to to wait. What? Can I plant? Can I plant a tonka bean tree in my backyard? Actually, I don't know, but I don't see why not. This is a seed, so theoretically, if it's collected at the right time so the fruit was ripe mm -hmm. and this is a mature seed yeah why not okay will you get a tree with tonka beans in it I don't eh, know. probably not 
Do you want to wait until it becomes a tree? Uh, 20, 30 you know. years. There you go. So are they beans, legumes, or dried fruits? They are seeds. So these are the seeds. So neither. They're not legumes. Legumes are just like these. They look like raisins. They're, think of them as almonds. Okay. So they come in a fleshy exterior that oh. kind of like falls off. So there's a flesh out there, yeah. So it, it becomes this. Okay. So a tree can produce a lot of these, a lot. Um, they've been used since the beginning of times um, in the Caribbean because they have a lot of, um, I mean, I guess we call them pagan rituals, but there's, oh. you know, the, the voodoo practices and other religions than what we know brought over from um, Africa many times. Um, these are a symbol of good luck. So theoretically, oh. if you make a wish, here you go. <laughs> Essence is coming. <laughs> if you make a wish and you like really straight and you pour some vodka on it. it or dip might, it in my wine. Or dip it in your wine. It <laughs> might come true. Um, it's a symbol of of hope and, you know, good future. So okay. dreams and wishes come true. Um, but it's been practically used in a lot of practical applications, one of which was uh, to flavor tobacco until very recently. Wow. Um, Where did yeah. you went, how did you learn this? I know you must stuff. Have, like, I told you I'm you a nerd. I know reading stuff. Reading up on tonka beans. I just know things. <laughs> I amass things. I have this brain that yeah. Um, so they've been used for flavoring tobacco, flavoring tea, uh, soaps, cosmetics, and so on and so forth wow. for a long, long, long time. Yeah. Okay. Um, and in perfumery, but it's been an unsung hero of fougeres and now gourmands. Um, I I think it's a fantastic thing and gourmet you know fufu chefs are now like taking it and doing this well that's what i was gonna i right. was gonna ask you next are there any famous recipes that involve tonka beans famous famous recipes because somebody was telling me that somebody... zubrovka i don't know if i'm allowed zubrovka i, I can say oh my god that's pretty that's better a... I, that's why i took mine out oh. it looks like an almond but you know we have an almond here okay i'm gonna show it to the camera it looks like this. No, Does it that one. There you go. This is what it looks like. That's an almond. Oh my god, this is bitter. And this that's is. Oof. A tonka bean. My brain is gonna explode right now. Mm mm. Oof. And that's the inside of a t um, an almond and the inside of a. Can you insert a picture in your video? Mm hmm. Okay. Wow, I can smell the, smell the tonka on your breath. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is very intense. This is a bitterness that you, is almost hot spicy bitterness mm, it's, it's, like it's your a, your mouth is uh, actually it's, it's i bit half of it your mouth is getting numb it's the wasabi of beans <laughs> basically so in dilution this becomes vanillic but if you take it the way it is it's very very intense very, it's hot spicy and extremely bitter so your my this side of my face is like botox right now from the inside Oof. <laughs> mm. Okay, um, Fougere Royale, when uh, was launched, it had as much as 10%. Kumarin. Yeah, which is a lot. So are they, is IFRA limiting tonka beans? Or, I mean, they seem to be limiting. Not everything. today, Satan. <laughs> okay. I, don't, I don't want to say that word. I don't want to say that name. I hate what IFRA is doing. Uh, so yeah, probably somebody discovered an even, even cheaper way to produce Kumarin. Kumarin has been produced since the 1800s, like I said. Um, it's not a very expensive uh, a, process. A process. Um, and it delivers clean Kumarin, which is kind of like, I was thinking about it on my way here. It's kind of like producing table salt. It's natrium, it's chloride, you put them together, bam, you get salt. And it's pure, and it's an inorganic matter, and so on and so forth. With organic compounds, but even with salt, from nature is better than not from nature, because there's some trace amounts of minerals in there trace amounts of like burnt wood or whatever they do to to to, to dilute this and distill mm. this and whatever um that gives it oomph you know it's just like it's it's not the same if you get mine salt or sea salt and you get salt from a lab it's not the same correct 
It's the same thing. Um, well, somebody in Ifra uh, found a way or they decided they want to make more money out of producing Kumarin. So they decided they're going to limit the amount of Kumarin that can be used in stuff because they say it's poisonous. Personally, I think Ifra is all a scam. It's to do, it's, it is a corporation that exists so that brands can make more money. <clears throat> Ifra is so that an brands can reformulate all of these very intense fragrances from the 80s and 70s, and then oh, they can the make the stuff. more intense versions. This is the absolute. This is the intense. This is the extreme. Now we have the profumo. Now we have this. Now we have that. It's the version. It's it's the same as. Oh, it's more intense. It's like a punch in the face. We're gonna dilute the original. But then there's no fight. It's gonna be watered right. down because. Right. Aqua de Joe, I remember being so intense in the 90s. It's like a watered, watery mess right now. I mean, it's it's fine, but I don't a lot remember. Of, a lot of things I mean, are we were just talking stronger. about this. Your favorite Tonka fragrance. That's my favorite Tonka fragrance. This and one. I have Fave Delicious. I this have Tonka Imperial. I have so many things. But this is my favorite application. Not application. Favorite Tonka this so good. juice. And this is the vintage version of Your Addict. It doesn't uh, smell anything like this anymore. No, it does not. Um, I think IFRA is an association comprised of big firms, some of which are laboratories creating aroma chemicals, which are fine. I mean, we need that too. Um, but as soon as they discover a new formula and they, as soon as they discover a new way of creating an aroma chemical that could be used in perfumery, they go in and say, hey, I'll buy you a drink. Just don't use this anymore. And all of a sudden you have a mass of, uh, of, of brands saying, you know what, our brother here, Sebastian, did one <laughs> fake study that says two people are allergic to Kumarin. So from now on, we're not going to use Kumarin in natural format and we're going to buy the chemical version of Kumarin produced by our other brother, blah, 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 blah. Oh God. So from now on, Everyone who wants to be on track with perfumery, we suggest you don't use blah, 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 you use that or that. That's such a shame. It is a shame because that limits a lot of things, that changes the quality of stuff that we already know and love. And every time they discover a new way of making money, they're going to limit the activity of, of, of creative endeavors in order to, to you know, to, to, to mm. replace it with, with, Money, 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 money. Anyway, so that is that is what Ifra does. They're trying to limit uh, Kumarin. Kumarin can be toxic. It used to be used. Is it toxic if I ate it? No. Okay. It used to be used as rat poison <laughs> because rats are allergic to it. We're not. Whoa. There you go. Um, nowadays, I love a lot wearing of... rat poison for perfume. Sure. <laughs> I know. I smelled your rat on you. <laughs> so that's not so bad. Just cut that out, okay? Like, I, sm I smell the rats on you. No, cut it out. Um, but no, seriously, um, it's a, it can be an anticoagulant for rats. Luckily, we don't share that much DNA with rats. No. But um, nowadays... Thankfully. Thanks for... <laughs> um, nowadays, a lot of chefs are using it um, as an added flavor. Just kind of like... what. You know, you, you you see some fancy dude shaving truffles, or like the so now salt. They're, sh now right. they're doing it with they're doing tonka? they're doing it with tonka. There was the salt bay. Remember the salt bay? Yeah. Do you know what? You know that sexy dude who would sh you know like mm -hmm. whatever cook without a shirt because that's what we all do. <laughs> I cook without a shoulder all the time. No, no I, don't. I don't. Um, and he would come with his biceps and go Pow! some salt. Some fancy salt. Expensive fancy. Some fancy tonka. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's what they do with tonka because it adds a little bit more depth, a little bit more um, Bitter sweetness, almond flavoring. Actually, if it's just tiny, a tiny amount, it, it's, it's, it's sweet. Okay. If it's a lot, like we put it in our mouths right now, it would take a lot. That's bitter. So you discussed what they smell like. Mm -hmm. So we got the vanilla touches, we got almondy touches. It even tastes like almonds to me. It is. There's like a little bit of a marzipan-y thing a happening bit. in there. Very intense. Yeah, but it is very bitter. Mm -hmm. Burns, mm -hmm. like the wasabi of uh, almonds, I would say. Yeah, it is, it is it's, it's hot. Yeah. If you taste it, it's spi spicy. spicy. Yeah, it's, it's like spicy. peppery. There's some peppery, so, there's a little bit of wood in there. So the question I have is, 
fougeres and the mm -hmm. gourmands are completely different. Mm -hmm. There's nothing gourmand about fougeres. Right. And I could see this going very gourmand because of all the almondy yeah. and vanilla touches. So when they're making coumarin, and here's the other question. I see in fougeres list, and, and the notes listed as tonka beans and mm -hmm. also listed as coumarin. Mm -hmm. What is it? Like, is it, is fougere coumarin or is it tonka bean or is it both? Coumarin is, coumarin is the main chemical ingredient mm -hmm. um, that makes tonka um, relevant. There are very few other things besides kumarin in Tonka that participate in olfaction in any way, mm. either chemically to fixate stuff or smell-wise to imp 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 uh, imprint a certain kind of flavor profile. So kumarin is the main ingredient in Tonka. This is why Tonka is being used. It has two applications. One is practical to fixate other notes so you don't smell the kumarin, mm -hmm. um, or to be a player in and of itself. So either it's a producer of a movie or it's an actor in the okay. movie. And if it's an actor, is it a it's secondary, you know, supportive actor, or is it a main actor? I see. If it's a main actor, it's a gourmand. If it's a supportive act actor, it's a fougère. It's a fougère. And if it's a producer, then it's a f fix it, f fix what is uh, fixant, fixatory. Fixative. <laughs> Fixative, thank you, in English, um, agent to the rest of the notes. So it doesn't really uh, participate in creating the smell, but it participates in making everything else mm -hmm. last longer. Um, so and, you, you and all of this is done by Kumaran, which is a very, very simple uh, molecule. You know, it matches the grain of this table. <laughs> <laughs> so you so, said it was first started used in uh, the early 1800s? Or it was isolated by mistakes. Some dude was trying to get something else. How do you isolate? Like lab experiments, right? Okay. They're trying to find something. Think, you know, and, and before modern chemistry, there was alchemy. And before that, it was like, mm -hmm. whatever, that was ritualic and, and yeah. you know, mythical experiments. But um, a lot of times the aroma chemical version so the pure form the the molecule of something has been discovered by mistake they were looking for something else uh musks were a discovered um as a reaction to f trying to find you know explosive and tnt and all that other stuff really yeah wow so luckily the dude with musk luckily the dude didn't explode his head off <laughs> And the byproduct of his, the smell. his failed experiment was this very musky, very pleasantly smelling thing that he's like, okay, maybe maybe I can use this. Maybe I can make some money off of that. And that's how synthetic musks started before we discovered ambrettes and uh, ways to exploit that. It was the same with Kumarin. The dude was trying to find something else and isolated this chemical um, uh, element, this chemical formula, to Kumaran in 1820, about there. Mm. But because it was not in his intention to find Kumaran, he didn't use it. He didn't, you know, he recorded it and then he moved on. It wasn't until 1882, yeah, that um, this was used in Fougé Royale. Paul Parquet. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit later in Jiki by Gerlin. But in fact, you know, after that, everything Fougère involved Kumarin, and most of the times it was including natural Kumarin, like I said, you know, absolute. You put this in alcohol, those crystals form, and then you take those crystals and you re-dilute them in alcohol, or they would use the chemical formula um, discovered in the lab in 18... 82. So um, it's been around for a long, long, long time, and it hasn't been until very recently that it's been used in gourmands that take tonka and make it the main. You've already talked about the differences between tonka beans and kumarin. Mm -hmm. Do they smell the same? Nope. So what's the difference then? What, what's the. Because in perfumery and notes reading, uh, when you look up fougeres, they either list tonka beans or kumarin, as I said earlier. Mm -hmm. So if they're listing them both and they smell very similar to a fougere, uh, why would they if smell... If they're listing tonka, uh, they're probably using the kumarin. Okay. But if you take kumarin as it is, it smells like... 
It smells like hey. Oh. It smells like actually it's not so freshly mown lawn or grass. It it smells it's more like dry. hay. So okay. um if any of you have grown up in a um country setting, you know that you mow the grass or whatever. Or the wheat grass or whatever. Yeah. And you take the leftovers, you pack them and every once in a while you have to kind of like air them because otherwise they start slightly fermenting so it smells like drying grass that is slightly starting to turn it's a there's a there's a wet aspect to it there's an earthy aspect to it there's a grassy woody um slightly sour ish mm. aspect to it which is what i think attracted uh ubigan to um, Kumarin because that's what gives the, fernie, the, the fernie. ferny, wet underbelly of a mushroom kind of feel. It, okay. it feels like the undergrowth, the you know the the, the first layer in a in a forest kind of a thing. The the closest so, to the ground. So then so. you're basically removing all the almondy, right. gourmandy, vanillic touches, right? Leaving it just with so the, the pure Kumarin uh, uh, smells like that. If you dilute it. 10% and up, around 20%, yeah. Um, so I wonder why didn't it, they didn't do it, it with smells, almonds. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, interesting. I don't know. Almonds are more expensive, I'm guessing, uh, because these are not edible. So you can't commercialize this as an edible thing that you just kind of like pop People down. People will like, get into bitter things soon. <laughs> I, I am into bitter things, and I don't think I can pop these as I would, no. you know, peanuts. So no. I think... Um, I think there's there's a different commercial value to okay. almonds than to these. They just wanted to find a use for them. If you dilute these, it's if you dilute uh, Kumarin or you know whatever absolute of Tonka, it starts smelling vanillic. So that's you know what they use in gourmands today. But the Kumarin of old age would would smell. So is there a like cost a, associated with extracting Kumarin? Is it expensive? Actually, I don't know, but uh, compared to every other process that I've learned of and all the other ingredients that take a long time to either grow or collect or develop, think of enfleurage if you want to do absolute of vanilla or if you, uh, not vanilla, um, actually absolute of vanilla is one of the top uh, most expensive ingredients. But if you want to do enfleurage of um, a good you jasmine, might, for you example, you might want to that explain what enfleurage is. Enfleurage, fleur means flower. Flower. Enfleurage means unflowering <laughs> of something. You take <laughs> you take the little flowers. No of, longer a virgin. <laughs> no longer a virgin. You take the little flowers uh, because there's no essential oils that you can extract from jasmine for example or um, other things you have to take the flowers live flowers and collect the smell from them while they're still alive or relatively alive so mm -hmm. the one way to do that is to create a very thin sheet of um, fat it can be oil based it can be lard back in the day and so on and so forth and take every single flower and put it face down on this very thin sheet of fat because a lot of the smells uh, in nature are not solu soluble in water they only dissolve or get you know stuck to oily bases that's why cannabis dissolves in um, oil, um, butter or whatever they make with it in California and not in water you can't boil marijuana and get something <laughs> nothing sticks to water but they it does dissolve in oil anyway um a lot of the things in nature only dissolve in oil or alcohol so um that's that's what enfleurage is you take flower by flower thousands of flowers in jasmine's case tens of thousands of flowers you put them face down on a very thin sheet of fat then you lift them and you put another flower so in order to get you know a very very tiny amount of of jasmine absolute you have to work really really hard which is why it's very very expensive, expensive. yep other things are just not expensive to produce but they're not stable so they like so i mean i guess it's not too much of a it's cost not with it's the not extracting kumarin from it's not and i th and i think that's why we're seeing so much of it nowadays when everybody's trying to make so much money <laughs> rather than you know produce quality it's a cheap ingredient that is quality ingredient i love um, it i, th I, think I it's love fantastic. it in fougeres 
and Eleven and Gourmands. They're so different. They are. So so totally different. Like, and it's and it's a more umfy, more interesting version of vanilla. It's a deeper, more interesting uh, flavor profile, which I I mean, I like. you have vanilla qualities and you have mm -hmm. nutty qualities, so... And woody qualities yeah. and some spice. It's almost peppery at times. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to not love about Tonka, except for it's going to give you the runs, both of us. We're going to have the runs after this. What? I didn't eat much. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, so, on that mm. note, what are the most popular Tonka bean fragrances that you know of? Popular? Well, what are... What are you know, I mean, Fougere Royale, we've already mentioned so many times. Sure, I mean, we, we can, mentioned we can, the, the Dior ad Addict, but this is the vintage version. It's we can, freaking amazing. It's so good. And it smells so different on you than it does on me. It I smells love it better on, me. on you. I than, love it yeah. on me. Oh I my God. That. It smells so It's better vanilla, me. tonka beans, and flowers. Jesus, it's so good. But very well blended and slightly spicy and slightly settled, Terry, mature. Terry Wasser. Did it in 2000, early 2000s. Gerland knew something when they hired this guy. I'm telling you, if you take this juice out, you Where don't see it. Where did you get this? It. I want a bottle. eBay. In vintage. eBay. In freaking vintage. But this you need to so know what you're looking for. Absolutely. Uh, so the vintage version um, has a yellow top <sighs> and no band here. So if you see it in stores, it has a, a, a metallic band between what looks like the cap and the rest of the bottle. Oh my god, it's so good. If you see it without a band, that's the vintage vintage version. And I would definitely recommend that, you know, getting that because it's vintage. It's, it doesn't look like it's old at all. It's like, like kept perfect. Why would it? Well, I mean, 2000. It's a fix. I mean, it's, it's almost 20 years old. It's it was filled with Tonka and to Tonka is a fixator in and of itself, just like... Vinever so it's fixed is. this fragrance so forever. It, basically. So <laughs> if if you see, this is a good practical advice. If you see a lot of Tonka listed in something or a lot of vetiver, which is one of the molecules oh God, that are so not reproduced in the lab, by the way. So if you see vetiver, it's it has to be natural vetiver. Of different qualities, of course, but it's natural. Both Tonka and Vetiver are very, very serious fixators. So if a lot of, uh, so percentage-wise, if a perfume is made of a lot of Tonka or a lot of Vetiver, it really doesn't matter when it was produced because that means... You're still going to get good quality? You're, you're, yeah, it's guaranteed that they're, they're pretty much the same, if not better, Mm. than um, the time when they were they were launched. I believe in things settling. There are a lot of um, gastronomies, for example, a lot of cuisines around the world that say if you cooked a stew, for example, or something, you have to let, you know, let it sit for a day or two for all the flavors to mash mm. and, you know, get together. So it's better later yeah. than right when you made it. I think that stands true with a lot of uh, fragrances as well, particularly the ones that, are, again, are very rich in um, ingredients that are also fixators. Interesting. Like vetiver and, and tonka. So then, popular, very well-known tonka fragrances? Uh, Feb Delicious is Delicious the bean. Delicious, delicious bean. Uh, tonka Imperial is another Gerda. one. Marin Tonka, which is a very weird... Uh, a typical offering from Jo Malone. You mean Jo Malone, yeah. Yes, but I think it's I think it's fantastic. There's so many. I mean, Oriflame has one that is very very good. Really? Actually. Yeah. The so, cheap brand. So um, it's it's not necessarily a guarantee of quality, but the way it blends and the way it works and and mixes usually uh, makes Tonka centered um, fragrances be. It's this is probably why Terry mm -hmm. Wasser got that job at Guerlain. Guerlain. So? This is so Guerlain it's to so me. Good. It's so good. By the way, everyone, if you're following this, know that everything I brought this man to test smells way better on him this smells so than it does on my skin. I don't know what that Gourmand is. Gourmands smell like, good on me. Oh my God. Oh, jeez. This, so this is really good. It's so good. It's so, so good. <sighs> anyway, well, that's... A lot of great information for these guys. What else should we say about Tonka beans? Nothing. Uh, we should say this. We are trying to... <laughs> no, we're not trying. I am trying. 
I am trying to convince this man to do a series. We are going to do this series. Well, let's see. If only two people watch my nerdy video, then probably no, you're no, going no. to toss me <laughs> and I will never see you again. But if you're no, like no, no. me. I'm no. a nerd, but not as detailed as you are. I'm, <laughs> I'm a detailed a person. I am such a nerd. You have studied way too much than I have. So that's I just why retain stuff. I want to learn about as much as I can about ingredients and notes and perfumes. So that's why I thought... Since you're so close, the connection is so good because I'm a nerd at heart. You're more nerd than I am. I'm such a I'm nerd. A closet, I am such I'm a closet a... nerd. Oh no, I'm out. I'm so out <laughs> when it comes to my nerdiness. I am. I am the nerd. I actually started a, a series of 60 second videos on Instagram called Fun Facts. Did you know? Uh, the library is not open. I forgot to put my glasses on. Oh, how dare you! The library is now officially open. Did you the know? The perfume library. Did you know? Library I know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm I'm all about the facts. I think they support a lot of the information we know. And if you are to only pick one or two or ten fragrances, because nobody's like this. Nobody, you know, most people don't do perfume porn. Okay. This is you a do. This is porn. I do porn too, um, but you know, most people don't. Most people want to take their time to find the stuff that works for them, works on their skin and understand why it works or not, uh, and why it's worth their money or not. So I, I don't know. Okay, if you find a bottle of that, let me know, because I want a I'll bottle. I'll get it for your birthday. Oh my God, that smells so good. It smells so good. It's fantastic. No, it, it is. It's. The best really thing I've fantastic. smelled all day today, and I have smelled so much. You're not supposed to say that, <laughs> considering the porn. But seriously, consider consider some of the vintages. It hasn't changed as much. You can still find it. It's not as deep. It almost no. feels like it smells the same, but it kind of like floats it's over. It's the diet version. <laughs> right, exactly. It floats over your skin. This one fuses. If you are to spray, um, you can't see it. It's very bluish but if you are oh, man, to take so it good. out it's deep terracotta red because it's been sitting oh, for a while it's the juice. very very deep and also and look it's oily, it, it's on, my oily skin. on your skin and yeah. this is just a regular designer release not even like the private or anything like that it's you know don't don't dismiss the vintages i think because all of us are loving perfume and are trying to understand perfume in all of its dimensions um it's worth exploring some of the some you of know the... i love vintages i mean i grew up with perfume since the 70s my parents both were um, mm -hmm. I, I don't chase them down though like other people do i don't necessarily chase them down but just, i just sometimes Sometimes I try to calibrate, I find something that's interesting, and then I do the research and I find out that it might have been better. So I kind of like hunt them down and try to, you know, kind of like narrow down until I find the best version of what something can be. Sometimes that's the, uh, that's the vintage version. I find that some stuff got better with reformulation for my oh, taste. Oh, sure, yes, yeah, and, they do. you know, yeah. And you know, but the other, sometimes they don't. This is this the, is one of those instances. Other thing I want to say about this: mm -hmm. it's targeted to women, but this is so masculine. Oh. That tonga bean is so yeah, because it gets spicy. Yeah, and it gets woody. It gets dry. It's amazing. Intense. It yeah. is literally amazing. On your birthday, if you're nice to me, <laughs> <laughs> if we if you still know me, <laughs> <laughs> should we guys should we give them an op should we give them an option of uh, our future nerdy videos? Sure, let's vote on it. Okay, and I get to talk. Do I get to talk? Do I, mean, I should I take this liberty? Okay, okay. I will. I will. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Cause we've drank a bottle of wine and now I Don't get, tell him we drank a bottle of wine. I drank a bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> so how about you vote on what the next nerdy video should be? I can make a mean video on either Oakmoss, because I'm very angry at Ifra. So there's a lot of material there. We can Can you do, get Oakmoss? So we can show it to them? Oh yeah, for okay. sure. Okay. Uh, and actually it's very easy to get, it's everywhere. If you know From where the to trees, look. right? Yep. Um, I can do a musk, if you, if you want to. You're gonna to. bring real musk? I have some friends, but I've I don't- I've seen those little pallet, pellet things. Pods, pods, they're called pods. I'm not sure I want to risk getting a fresh one because I don't want to contribute to that, no. but I can talk about musk ad nauseum about all sorts of musks and it gets raunchy and 
Okay. I mean, it's you know. Um, or my, we can my do vote for my vote. Resins. Resins. Can we do resins? I want to do resins. It's gonna be a long. Resins, video. myrrh, olibanum, frankincense. Peru. Benzoin. Benzoin. Yes. Can we yes. do? Can we? Can we do resins? Next? We can do all that. Do you guys want to uh, hear about resins? Don't influence them. You vote. <laughs> <How is it? laughs> Please vote for resins. Vote. Okay, so let us know what kind of um, nerdy video you want to see yes. next. We can do wine perfumes. Well, cheers. No, I'm just saying, like theoretically, we wine can, perfumes. Why not? I don't see wine in perfumes much. We can talk about wine and tannins and, and grape seed oils and stuff. They're, okay. they're used that more than That one doesn't excite you know. me as much, but maybe in the future. <laughs> okay. Okay, then we're going to drink the wine. But, um, not talk about it. Uh, you let us know what you want to hear about. We can talk about very sensitive stuff and flowers and spices. And we can, to we can talk about um, citrus. I oh, know I a lot about citrus. Okay. Um, but let's give them three options. Summer. Okay. Resins. Musk. Vote for resins, guys. <laughs> Musks. No, resins, resins. It's so inappropriate. Musk is so inappropriate. Okay. Uh, resins, musk, and oak moss. Okay. Should we do that? Oak moss is, is, is a big, big, big thing because they keep Yeah, you can, we can rag on it. Ifra. Yeah, yeah we, can, we can talk a lot. Of, I can talk a lot of Okay. So, one other yeah. thing I want to mention is once we do these nerdy videos, I will follow up with a top 20 list as I've been doing on Saturdays. So, once this airs, you'll expect a top 20 Tonka Bean Fragrances video. So, look out for that. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I really enjoyed talking to you about Tonka Beans. The library is now closed. Tasting the Tonka <laughs> Beans as well. And guys, they are sold at Amazon. I saw them there. So if you're curious to discover them and cook with them potentially. Yeah, you can. You can put them in vodka. I've, I've seen, you know, I've seen people infuse vodka with it or any other uh, sort of alcohol if you consume it. Um, I've seen, like I said, chefs shave li little bits of it. Yeah. Kind of like you like do little... with truffles mm -hmm. on top of a dessert, for example. Um, I've seen it used in flavoring... Um, uh, tobacco. I've seen it shaven into um, body gonna, products and body butters and stuff. Like nutmeg. You can. <laughs> oh, my yeah, cappuccino. Nice. nice. Yeah. Tiramisu with Tonka. Oh <gasps> my God. Tonka tiramisu. Oh, that's a name oh. for a fragrance. <laughs> Don't say that loud. Somebody's gonna steal it now. I hope somebody. St if you steal no, it, let I'm us not, know. I'm gonna cut that part out. <laughs> <laughs> can we cook next time? Okay. I'm a mean cook. Okay. Like mean cook. You're a mean cook. I'm a mean cook. I cook. What are we gonna cook? Can we cook with? I cook Middle Eastern and you things? cook Romanian. Let's cook with smelly things. Okay, I cook lots of smelly things. I have no, sir, to have, I'm, I'm serious. I have to have fragrant food. Can we I do it? To, sure. Should we should start. Oh. Oh no! What? We should start a series of. I don't have fragrant. A, I have. A, I don't have a cooking kitchen. Video and I don't have a videoable kitchen. Hmm. I'm sure we can find somebody. Okay. Are there any fans who have a working kitchen? Oh, <laughs> we can come over in San Francisco. Anyway, okay. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching this video about Tonka beans. If you're interested in learning more about Tonka beans, I do have a playlist of Tonka bean fragrances videos you can watch to find out. Mm -hmm. Other than that, if you have any questions or comments for me or Dana, please put it down so we can start a conversation on the, mm -hmm. the video. And please like this video, please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. And make sure you tune in for the Top 20 Tonka Bean Fragrance video very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.